Okay, so some topics to cover today. Um, <laughs> the first one is, well, actually, there's only one. There's a couple of videos, but they were kind of all getting at the same thing. So I want to talk, first, I'm going to start with um, an intro to, also, welcome to the new people who are here who realize that, like, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really make videos about politics. I just make videos about my opinions about things that I see going on in society, in particular communities that I think impact me, especially communities that don't really have to do at this point with black celebrity culture, just because I feel like it's really toxic and there's other parts of society that need to be like explored in much more depth just to like normalize like regular black woman life. Not the point though. Okay, so um, first of all, it looks like Judy Garland has been uh, trending because of like her blackface sketch and stuff and um I think I personally think that it is about time that someone kind of just talked about that to the people who are defending Judy Garland as an actress and basically saying like oh yeah but it wasn't her fault like you know she didn't write that script like she wasn't like on her own making blackface videos this is true like that she did not do that I am not claiming that she did do that I don't believe that um it was her intent but I want to go I want to comment on a thing that Matt Walsh said which is wrong in so many ways even though someone else wrote the script even though you know it looks like her mother was in charge of her career her mother made a choice that was really derogatory it's it's kind of like everyone so Matt Walsh in this video he's trying to talk about social norms and he's saying Back in 1953, nobody had, like, basically racialized respect. That's very true, Matt Walsh. Like, in 1953, it was an awful time to be alive and be black in this country because racial apartheid was still major. It It was so bad, right? It was so awful. That doesn't let anyone off the hook, though. Just because most people were awful and that was the social norm what that means is that most people are awful see this is the part where i have a problem with it this is the same thing that like black men are saying when they're like but all of the other black men love the fact that tory lane shot meg the stallion it's see it's the normal thing um it's the thing where where um you know in the in the black female community like everyone is is Everyone is ganging up against Meg Thee Stallion, so it's the cool thing to do. Let's all do it. Or it's, remember when that black girl went to, I think it was, she went to Mexico with her two friends, and then, I can't remember what happened, but the girl died. And then her her best friends who, like, saw the death and recorded it or something, they knew what happened, and then they just chose not to tell and, like, lie and kind of cover it up. Because everybody else was doing it. Everybody else was lying. So then they were like, we're going to lie to you. We're all just going to lie. That doesn't take away from it being a lie. And that's especially why I have a problem with like the Christian fundamentalists, especially in America. If you are going to be the person who's like holier than thou and you want to hold this like ethical truth up to everyone, you cannot be mad at Gen Z when they come with like wokeness that actually makes some fucking sense and is like putting you in your place. Okay, like some of it you don't have to agree with and you don't have to like it. And it's an, that is where that is exactly why I call myself a moderate over and over and over and over again. This is also another reason why I do not include myself in conversations that have to do with LGBTQIA and and really trans issues just because I'm not familiar with it and I have my own personal situation and identity as a black woman functioning in society and I'm having to battle stereotypes and things that have to do with me I think that for me personally I definitely don't try to like disrespect like the LGBTQIA community purposefully I do call out certain things because I feel like um there's over representation of black women in that community and it is like um influencing a younger generation of black women to almost like choose to be gay and and, and, like dykish to be like socially acceptable and i don't think that that is proper i also think there's like um a, a really strange thing happening with like this like 
feminization of like black males wearing like feminine hairstyles like that's a thing and it just it's just to me it's it's weird but whatever like that those are just my opinions and they might be wrong to you like you might just be like I don't agree with that that's fine that's fine but the thing about blackface um is it, it though so those type of movies with like Judy Garland and those type of th- that stuff was actually pushed out to it was just pushed out all over the world like all over the world people were watching that media and they were understanding like how to treat black people and then they were treating black people that way based on those videos and stuff so that had like it just has this lasting impact okay on like the socialization of an entire generation of people and nobody's really ever been held responsible for it so for the people on tiktok who are coming and being like yeah this was gross they're fucking right and like for Matt Walsh to say like, no, nobody should be held accountable 50 years later because those were the social norms. Well, it was also a social norm to be like super anti-black and to toss black children into the mouths of alligators. In this country, that was a real thing. That was a social norm. Like you can't just sit here and talk about like social norms as to, to say like, oh, well, when the group does something um everyone has to 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 do what the group does because as a a group we're correct that's not true it's just not true either you're ethically and morally correct or you're not you're not and we like I feel like especially as a person who understands like civics and society you have to be able to say like when you've done wrong and you're not not really and especially when you've like learned from your mistakes and that's the part that seems really like shitty um even to hear the the conservatives kind of like not want to take ownership of the the fact that something's wrong especially especially like people I don't actually know if Ben Shapiro talked about this but it's like every single thing that happens that's like anti-semitic he calls it out and he like refers to all of this history and all of this like the legacy of all these things go wrong going wrong but it's like every single time that something happens especially when it's like derogatory toward black women nobody wants to call it out they're just like no 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 those were the times there's always an excuse. I'm just going to move on from that. Those are my feelings about that particular um, situation. But okay. So then then we have um, I Am Aloha shares this video that's about um, this woman who had a baby with like, she calls him a man in Atlanta, just a man in Atlanta. So, um, this man had, this man was like 30, she was like 22 or something, you know, he was her first relationship and, um, he had like six other children and, and it's not, he was just doing all type of just fuck boy, crazy shit, uh, and left her with a baby. And, um, so now she's like a single mom with a baby. Um, and she's just making TikToks about, you know, how she met this man, how it all came to be, what, you know, what's going on with the baby, like, um now and and so basically her message to other um the message to other women is like stay on birth control like really be aware of this being a situation that men are kind of not not all good like a lot of them are kind of shitty and I think it's a useful message to share because um sometimes you really feel like you're doing well actually I don't know in this particular case all she points out are red flags it's like he never takes her on any dates um all throughout the pregnancy he basically gaslit her um then he like after 30 days after the baby was born, he just completely like leaves. Um, it was just so fucked up. He just like left all of his shit in their apartment and he, he just, he left, went back to Georgia. So they, I guess they moved closer to her parents when she got pregnant. And then, you know, I, when this is another reason why I think, you know, children out of wedlock is just very dangerous in wedlock. Um, I feel like men are, um, I was actually thinking about this today, uh, during work and, and I'm going to explain it further. So when a man is making a decision to like marry a woman, he is saying like, I, I want to, I want to be with that woman. I want that, that woman to have my children. Like I love that woman as a whole person, not just like how attractive she is not just like that because she is a woman and she can give birth but like 
like she is an extension of him now i'm gonna make probably a little bit more content about this just because i feel like jasmine tukes and her husband are a really good example of this like she just had a baby he's still completely like so into her um and it's just like so clear and it's just like the way that he like treats his family and to what like you can really they post kind of a lot of it and you can see that like love and you can see the way that he cherishes her as like a human and it is really um something i think that should be like role modeled and something that should be like highlighted a little bit more especially that in um in relation to like what we see with maybe um the girl like helen's friend mercedes right with her invisible baby daddy or like what we see with um what is it creation or um blue faces baby mama right or or now what we see with this girl in atlanta um when men are choosing not to marry for whatever reason and they just you know think like uh, and they just get you pregnant it, it it's it's a big telling sign about like how they feel about you and I think you, it might be hard, but I think you have to, as a woman, you have to admit, you have to admit that. Like he, he just, he might not love you. Like you're not the one for him and that's okay. Because like the truth is, um, if you, if you in your heart, you seriously have like a deep passion to be like a, you know, a good woman in a relationship with a man who will love you, I really do feel like there is someone out in the world for you. If you, if you want that. But I also just want to, like, really normalize the fact that, like, you don't have to want that. Like, you, because I, I feel like for me growing up, people, and it was, like, it was really an other people thing. Like, other people kept putting in my head, like, you have to want this. You have to want this. You have to want this. And they just kept, they would say all of this shit to me, and I, I just didn't have another perspective. And so I just really want to be that other perspective. Like, you don't have to want that. If you do want that, I'm I'm not really happy for you because like I don't know you but like that is good and that is something to be like proud of but like just because you are a woman you don't have to feel like that is your obligation that you have to want that that it is a part of your biology like you don't have to feel that way and it has nothing to do with being gay and that's one thing that's very confusing for me because people always just assume that oh if she's wearing like pants or something and she's just wearing like normal clothes so she I'm not like I'm not like hyper feminizing myself I'm just kind of like a normal normal girl look right like oh that means she's gay like no it doesn't it just means that I'm just like a normal girl and like normal clothes who's just like out in the world and also like me being alive is just not for some guy or like for my family or just really for anyone else it's for me that is that is a perspective that I've developed on my own though so I also am not trying to like it put like force my beliefs on somebody else you should feel however you feel which could be very different than how I personally feel and then the last uh, thing I want to talk about is a clip that I posted yesterday. Oh, shit, my tea is boiling. Um, I'll just talk about this quickly. So I posted this yesterday, and it was a clip from Ben Shapiro, and he was, like, wa- he was like watching um, a stand-up comedian who was talking about birth control and how there are these liberal white women who are donating money to um, women of color to get abortions. And he was saying that that like basically that is very supportive of like the ideology coming from the kkk um and i just want to give my opinion on this but just give me one second hold on
Okay, sorry. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Funny. Okay, yeah. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, okay. So the, the little video by Ben Shapiro. So, um, he's saying he was like, um, that, that ideology basically of like, of white women giving money to, to help black women get abortions or women of color get abortions is like the same ideology of the KKK. And a lot of people keep making jokes about that because they keep wondering why the population numbers aren't going up. Um, and a lot of it has to do with women of color getting access to abortions like that and white women too, but also just lot, like lots of, like lots of women of color, especially like lots of black women abort children. It is like so commonplace that you can't even, it's so commonplace. Um, and I think that like we kind of need to start talking about it a little bit more and kind of the reason I think having access to it is really good. But I also think that it shouldn't be like a normal thing. It shouldn't be a normal thing. Like you shouldn't be aborting probably like multiple times in your life. That is probably you might need to like rethink your character and kind of the way that you're living your life. If that is the case, which I know that it actually is the case. Um, and I feel like the reason that life kind of becomes simpler in terms of like relationships and understanding men when you live in states that have outlawed abortion, the reason that, that life kind of becomes a little bit simpler and it, how could I, it becomes more like true. Um, because like you men and women alike are not going to to get into relationships with people who they don't see themselves having a future with. So like immediately women start judging men based on their financial capacity. Oh, how much money does he have? Is he a good provider? Is he a kind person? You know, does his family like me? Does he have a family? Do, you know what I'm saying? Like all things like that become really important because, um, women are now looking for partners and providers who are going to be like safe for their children. Those are, that's the way that women now start making decisions. And when that isn't the case, like when you know that you have this like alternative, like abortion and, and birth control and all of these things, then you can kind of like, you have, you can take chances now. You can say like, Oh, well he, this might be okay. This might work out. I could, I could possibly like sleep with him before marriage and things like that because I could just fix it. And that's true. And so women have been able to kind of like take these calculated risks and then just like rewind, like, Oh, kind of. So in a sense, they're kind of moving and, and dating a little bit like, like men because they can, because they don't have to deal with like forever consequences, like children with men who they don't like, like, that's just the reality. Now, the problem is like, well, it's, I don't even know if it's technically like a problem because now I feel like, you know, men are having to like really step up. Like if if me, the men who want to have families are are really going to have to like step up and like prove like beyond a shadow of a doubt that like they want that family, that like that is what they want. Otherwise, like women aren't going to believe them. I think that the um that girl um the girl in the um the the this like you know TikToker with the guy from Atlanta girl is really showing like how awful some men can be and how they are they are literally a lot of the times just trying to almost like get women like prizes and then discard them like trash. This is like kind of that Andrew Tate uh, mentality. And it, it is, br it's brutal. It is brutal. Um, and I think you have to be aware of it. And so um, the point that the conclusion that I kind of came to today is just this ideology that like, I feel like for a minute, like, 
black women should stop having children. And I'm not saying that out of a place of like malice. I'm saying it out of a place of like really like love. Like I think we need to like have a moment in society where black women are not like caretakers of other people. They're not like um, heroes for some family. They're not, um, they're not like horror stories for society. They're just members of society and not necessarily mothers of society. I really think that that's important. Like we desperately need that. Um, anyway, I, I, I saw that, um, one of my favorite Nigerian content creators, I think she's starting um, either an undergrad program or a master's program um, in Michigan, I believe, or somewhere in the United States. So if you watch this channel, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for making a vlog that's just about, you know, what you're doing in your life. I personally really like to watch it. I think it is extremely inspiring. Um, Yeah, I think it's really inspiring. I'm going to continue to watch and support. Um, I, I was taking a nap and I fell asleep like halfway through it. But tonight, as I like exercise, I'm going to watch it again so that I can make a little bit more in-depth content about it. Um, yeah. I don't, I, I also want to just repeat, like, um, I, I really do donate money to Planned Parenthood because I think it's a necessary part of society right now. Just because it feels like the people like the Kodak Blacks and stuff, they are so, like, interested in, like, tearing down black women. And you can see it. You can see the evidence of it, like, all over society, how, like, you just see, like, right and left, like, black women who are just, like, torn down, just torn down. And, and um, even if I think about my own experiences, it's like you might go through something and it's just so normalized for like black women to, to lose. Like <laughs> it's like something bad happens and everyone in society is like, yeah, this is the way it's supposed to be. Because like it feels like those are the normal part. part. It's like it's like getting at that thing that Matt, Matt Walsh said. Right. Um, and that is so wrong. That that is so bad. Um yeah it's so it's so wrong and it's so bad and it's so gross and w like we cannot normalize that um oh i just yeah that's i that is the message for tonight <laughs>